stock on the East Coast. We've got poll closings in California, Hawaii, Idaho, Oregon, and Washington. In terms of the way that we can characterize these races, in California, which is the largest electoral vote prize of all, NBC News projects that President Obama is the winner in California. In the state of Washington, NBC News also projects that President Obama is the winner in the state of Washington. In Hawaii, President Obama's original home state, NBC News projects that President Obama has won in Hawaii. In Idaho, NBC News projects that Mitt Romney has won in the state of Idaho, one of the most conservative states in the nation. And in Oregon, this is interesting, in Oregon, the ruling is from NBC News at this hour, too early to call President Obama in the lead in Oregon. In terms of understanding what we are waiting on right now, oh, uh, excuse me, Iowa, or as I like to think of it, the Iowa part of Ohio, Iowa is still too early to call with President Obama in the lead. In Nevada, it is also too early to call with President Obama described as being in the lead. In Florida, it is too close to call. In Ohio, it is also too close to call. In North Carolina, too close to call. In Virginia, it is too close to call. And in Colorado, it is too close to call. That is where things stand at this hour. But again, capping the top of the hour results from polls that just closed, California, Washington, and Hawaii all going for President Obama. Mr. Romney winning in Idaho. Oregon characterized as too early to call with President Obama in the lead. Steve Schmidt, we've been talking a lot about how much we can't talk to the Romney campaign at this point. Um, is, things have not been going their way tonight in terms of the way things have unfolded, but it is not, they are not out of it. It's possible that they could definitely still win. Um, what's, what do you think is going on inside that campaign right now? Well, they're looking at the numbers, they're running their models, they're looking at this on a precinct by precinct basis. They're obviously aware of the coverage, they're obviously aware of the trend. The mood is starting to darken darken a little bit likely they're they're worried but they are not out of it yet and they still know that there are paths to victory uh, these are going to be close races they obviously have to be disappointed that Florida is as close as it is they expected to win in Florida I think they expected to win in Florida early in the evening the polls had a lead there that was uh, a couple points up for for Romney and it's not materializing but also um, Rachel one of the things that Chuck Todd talked about earlier demographically I think that um, that if the polls are accurate, it, it's highly likely that Mitt Romney is going to come in uh, when the night is done, about 60, 61 percent of the white vote. Um, the last candidate who got 60, 61 percent of the white vote was George Herbert Walker Bush in 1988, 24 years ago, and that got him over 400 electoral votes. And you look at the closeness of the race tonight, Mitt Romney can eke out a victory, or if Mitt Romney loses, it speaks just in stunning detail uh, how the country has changed demographically and the catastrophe for Republicans with the Latino vote, which was over 40 percent for George W. Bush just eight short years ago, and now tonight is going to be in the 20s. And even if Mitt Romney is able to win this election tonight, this will be the last election uh, that a Republican can possibly win as a national candidate with these type of numbers and the Latino community uh, with women voters uh, and it's really going to lead to uh, some important moments of soul searching I think in the Republican Party if we're to be a national party. If locking up that much of the white vote is no longer a way to win, how does that change the balance of what the party offers voters in terms of social issues, in terms of economics? If you, if you look at California, which just came in, called the moment the polls close in California. I have to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Uh, we have an apparent winner uh, in North Carolina. Uh, North Carolina, NBC News is projecting Mitt Romney as the apparent winner in this case. Uh, that means that not everything is in, but NBC is comfortable enough with what is in to describe him as the apparent winner in this race. Uh, North Carolina obviously was uh, would be a huge blow to Mitt Romney if he did not win it. Uh, winning it doesn't get him all the way there, but it gets him further along than he was. I'm sorry to have to interrupt you there. Sir. In, in uh, 1988, George Herbert Walker Bush won the state of California. Uh, Ronald Reagan, of course, the former governor of California. California was a state that voted Republican. 1994, Proposition 187, uh, perceived by Latinos in the state as an attack on them. It destroyed the Republican Party 
for an entire generation in the state. The party has not recovered. In fact, it has ceased to function as a political party in the state. And California has always been a trendsetter for the, for the country. And if you look at the Republican Party nationally with the Latino vote, the fact that we're trending in the direction of California is deeply, deeply, deeply worrying if you're a Republican. But see, I, I think that in terms of non-white voters, Latinos, uh, even African Americans, no one is addressing the issues. I think you've got to address people's interests to get their votes. It's not like uh, we can say that Latinos, or for that matter, African Americans, just automatically Democrats. We're not born Democrats. DNA doesn't stand for Democratic Party in us. It's that you go with who addresses your interest. You tend to embrace who embraces you. And I think as the soul searching that Steve talks about, they've got to deal with, as you said, the social issues. You cannot talk against people's interests. You cannot demonize them, marginalize them, and say, why don't any of you vote for me? Because people have a thing like self-interest and self-preservation like anyone else. And I think that's the soul searching they have to do. And it would also so make the Democrats uh, uh, have to do more soul searching. But they're not competing for the Democrats having those votes because they're just telling people, oh, be, uh, go to both parties, but we're not going to address anything in your interest. And no one is going to commit that kind of uh, crime against their own no, self we're going, We need to go to Missouri, actually, right now, because Senator Claire McCaskill, the Democratic incumbent, is giving her victory speech. We want to dip into this. Been going full bore for two years, and this is such a team. Um, every single part of this campaign, intellect, great strategy, a work ethic that I'm in awe of, a sense of togetherness, and that we're all there were no egos in our team, just a focus on what we had to get done. I can't name them all. They are truly special. But I got to tell you, I got to give a shout out to Corey and Adrian, the campaign manager and deputy campaign manager, who did a great job. OK, then let's get to the meat and the bone. And that would be you. That would be all of you. And what you did, thousands of volunteers across the state, you decided that you wanted nothing more complicated than your government to reflect your values. I stand in awe of your passion and your commitment and your patriotism and your determination that you were going to have a voice in the United States Senate that made you proud. I also stand here in acknowledgement of the fact that I did not get every vote today. There were hundreds and thousands of votes that were cast for Congressman Aiken. He graciously called me. He graciously congratulated me. I recognize his years of public service and his patriotism. But all the people that I, the votes I didn't get today, here's my message to them. I go to Washington first as a Missourian. I go first as a Missourian. And I will continue to be a senator that works across the aisle in a bipartisan way to find the compromises to solve problems for every Missouri family, not just the families of those that voted for me. We're going to interrupt Claire McCaskill's actually very good speech right now to make a very important call. NBC News projects that the winner in the state of Iowa is President Obama. Six electoral votes and a, 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 a state that was very hard fought this year. Uh, again, NBC News projecting the winner in Iowa right now as President Obama. Let's go back to Claire McCaskill. It makes me prouder than complete strangers walking up to me, grabbing my hands and giving me a word of encouragement. Whether it was the elderly woman at the airport that grabbed my hands and said, Miss Claire, I'm going to fight hard for you. 
or the maintenance man at the office building a few weeks ago who shouted me as I walked through the lobby, Claire, we got your back. It is those people, it is those salt of the earth, wonderful people that live in this state I love, it is those people that I will go to Washington and fight for with everything I've got. This was an extraordinary campaign for so many reasons. The results are astounding. Now I want all of you to own it. You deserve it. You did it. That was a lost shot. Well, you were actually looking at there, and I know what that lost shot was. Uh, was Tammy Duckworth uh, in Illinois who defeated Joe Walsh uh, tonight in that House seat. That was an abrupt cut. That was a mistake there. But I should let you know that Tammy Duckworth has unseated Joe Walsh, uh, the Republican congressman, uh, in that, in that hard-fought seat that had a ton of outside money uh, in it. Tammy Duckworth is a remarkable person. She is an Iraq War veteran, a helicopter pilot uh, who lost both her legs uh, in, uh, in Iraq. Um, she served in the Veterans Administration. This is her second run for office and uh, she has beat Joe Walsh. Uh, we just dipped out again a little abruptly there from Senator Claire McCaskill's victory speech uh, in Missouri. Her holding on to that seat is something that nobody thought could happen until Todd Akin ended up being her opponent. Todd Akin has conceded. Claire McCaskill has held on to that seat. And the big news right now, of course, though, is what happened in the middle of Claire McCaskill's speech, which is that the state of Iowa was just called for President Obama. Um, nobody is to 270. Anything could yet happen. Uh, but we also have another call to make right now in the, or, in the Oregon presidential race. NBC News is projecting that President Obama uh, has also won in Oregon. So in terms of the 11 o'clock poll closings, President Obama won California and Washington and Hawaii and Oregon. Uh, Mitt Romney won Idaho. Uh, in terms of the, the, the bigger news here about Iowa, the reaction that you're seeing here in Chicago um, is to the Iowa news. and to the Oregon news and we have just learned that in the state of Ohio NBC News has projected that President Obama has won the state of Ohio President Obama has been reelected for a second term he did it uh, with this call in Ohio it is uh, a done deal. President Barack Obama wins a second term uh, as 44th President of the United States. Uh, let the record show that it is 12 minutes past 11 p.m. on the East Coast. Ohio put him over the top. Chris Matthews. He didn't need the South. It's so interesting. He may well win all three of those states, but he didn't need them. This is a very, and I thought, I said this at the beginning of the night, the ge geography of this election is very powerful. And I've watched some of the ugly stuff in this campaign along the ethnic and racial lines perpetrated by people like Donald Trump and Sununu and the rest of them. And around the edges by the candidate himself, the Mitt Romney talking about welfare and all the rest of it. And, and, uh, and what's his name? Uh, the former Speaker of the House, whose name eludes me right now. <laughs> Newt Gingrich talking about food stamps and all that, I have to call it crapola, all that stuff didn't have an effect in the North, apparently. We'll see if it's had an effect in the South, but he's won it without the South. With Florida still too close to call, with Virginia still too close to call, with Colorado still too close to call, with Nevada still too early to call. Uh, President Obama has won re-election tonight. These shots are live footage of his headquarters uh, in Chicago. This is, this is a big night for wage earners in this country. I think the history books will show that President Obama and his team ran a flawless campaign. Not once did he ever, ever have to backtrack on what he said or what they meant. Clearly well defined early in this campaign. They went after Mitt Romney to define him. He stuck with the middle class theme and ran on his record. He ran on his record of accomplishing a generational shift in health care, reviving this economy with 32 months of private sector job growth, uh, being handed something that no other president had been handed in 70 years in the economy, protecting the big three, uh, even when he told the Republicans, uh, let's go big, and they wouldn't do it. In the face of obstruction, this president is going to go down 
down in history as one of the great ones because of all the obstruction and all of the social things that he had to face and all of the comments coming from the Tea Party, President Obama wins re-election, I think, on his record tonight, sticking up for American workers. If you look at the map, you will see where unions put their resources is exactly where the president won tonight. He won the Rust Belt, and he won where he had to win, a flawless campaign. I, I think it's a big night for the country uh, when we see, uh, against all odds, the obstruction and the venom. I mean, you have this man, the president of the United States, birth being questioned, whether he was even a citizen of the country, yet not one time did he bow to the rancor, not one time did he feed into the poison and ugliness, he maintained the dignity of the office, and he performed against obstructionists in the House and in the Senate. I think that he showed America a better way to lead. He brought us back not only from the brink of economic disaster, he brought us back from the ugliness that politics had become. Um, we've now gone back from the cesspool to where we can engage in some political dialogue with dignity. America won the night, right? Re-electing President Obama against this rancor and this atmosphere brought out the best in America. We won tonight, and I think that it's a great night for the country. Lawrence Hiddell. I'm just looking at that crowd in Chicago. I was there four years ago uh, when this happened, and I, for one, just want to see what they're experiencing for a night. She took the plane out there on a chance of win. They did not plan a giant outdoor event of the same scale that they did in Grant Park in 2008, but as you can tell, it's not uh, exactly somebody's living room. Very yeah. emotional for yeah. a lot of people. I want to bring in Steve Schmidt. Steve Schmidt, you ran uh, the campaign. You were the senior strategist for the campaign uh, against Barack Obama in 2008 in the general election with McCain and Palin. Uh, looking at this night in Chicago and reflecting on this result, what do you think? Uh, what do you think the importance of this is for the country? Um. Big night, obviously, for the president. And every time there's a there's an election, and we we turn the page and we elect or reelect a new president, it's a new beginning, and it's a opportunity to do things better, to do right by the American people, to govern the country in a way that creates prosperity, builds a stronger America. So, congratulations to President Obama, his team uh, tonight. The um, the you know the difference I think is that in the Republican Party, I think this victory will set off a civil war. In the, inside the Republican Party. There's going to be a lot of soul searching. This was a winnable uh, election. Uh, the president was vulnerable. Uh, they ran a flawless campaign, a brilliant campaign. I agree, as as, as Ed pointed out, um, you know, absent you know the president's debate performance in that first debate, you know, really a flawless campaign. And uh, and so when you look at these losses in the Senate seats, you look at the fact that this race is called at quarter after 11 uh, in the in the East. Um, there's going to be a, a lot of soul searching, and I think a lot of fighting inside the Republican Party in the in the months ahead. One bit of news that I need to communicate is that with this win, with Barack Obama and importantly Joe Biden being re-elected for a second term, this means that we can also now project that the Democrats have retained control of the Senate. Because the vice president functions as the tie-breaking vote in the Senate, even with the outstanding races still not yet called in the Senate, this means with Joe Biden as vice president, the Senate retains, uh, the Senate is retained in Democratic control. Again, from earlier tonight, we know that the House will be retained in Republican control. That tells you something. We'll wait to see what the margin's gonna be in the Senate, but that tells you something about the governing environment uh, for a second term of Barack Barack Obama. I would also just like to point a privilege to say um, that this is an important moment for policy. Um, this was a consequential presidency, not just because Barack Obama was the first African American president, and not just because the country turned to the Democratic Party after eight years of George Bush and Dick Cheney. This was a consequential presidency in terms of policy, in terms of civil rights matters like Don't Ask, Don't Tell, in terms of the president supporting marriage equality, in terms of economic policy like the stimulus, in terms of historic, historic change like health reform, uh, like health reform, and like some of the other Wall Street reform, credit card reform, student loan reform. 
measures uh, that this president was able to pass. I know I'm forgetting something right now in this historic moment. Had this president been a one-term president, those policies would have been dialed back along with the rest of his legacy. Those policies will now be held on to in this country as we experience what is almost an inevitable economic rebound. That would have happened with anybody as president. We are coming out of a horrible depression-sized recession. And as the economy gets better, those policies will be in place and they will become part of the new normal in America. They would have been clawed back had the presidency gone to the Republicans. Obamacare is here to stay. And it means that we got health reform for the first time in about 100 years of trying to get it. Can I, can I add to that? Completely agreeing with it. The president has an unfortunate expression. I got it. It's not that. I got it, this. It's, yeah. I got, it's not that. It's that the people voted. Of course they voted for him and tribute to him and with admiration for him. But they voted for those things. They voted for a president who would intervene and save the auto industry. They voted for a president who would be big enough as a Democrat to bring in his opponent, Hillary Clinton, and make her Secretary of State. They voted for somebody who would get rid of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, who would oppose uh, enforcing the Defense of Marriage Act, who would have Lily Ledbetter as one of his objectives and one of his agenda items. And they go through the list of all the, and all the groups that will now support him. The other guy, and I'm not going to knock him, he lost, looks like now, and he did lose. It's hard to even absorb this information so quickly, by the way, after all the months we've been covering yeah. it. But Romney was wrong to say self-deport. This isn't some mistake. It's a policy decision he made in the beginning of the campaign. He was going to get to the far right. And it was the one case he couldn't pivot back on. It's interesting, all that pivoting did the last couple of weeks. The Hispanic community, we'll find out the numbers tomorrow. But it looks to me like they saw this as a real turn in the road against them. In this whole election cycle, Mitt Romney never hung his hat on anything. President Obama said, I'm with the American workers. I'm with the, I'm with the middle class, and I, and I believed in them, and I proved that I would stay with them. And it, it was really a campaign of definition. And in the closing days, the president was saying, you know who I am. You can trust me. I tell the, the last, truth. I tell the truth. Yeah. You know what I say you can count on. And a lot of these people who were celebrating tonight are probably in amazement that this has happened because they were so fearful of Citizens United. This is the first election that we are going through under the umbrella of Citizens United. Money coming, pouring in. This is a tremendous loss for billionaires in this country and a real message that democracy does rule. A loss for Karl Rove and all of those people out there who thought that they could buy their way right back to the White House. It's a big night for the Democrats in the Senate as well. And this should really warm the hearts of everybody in this country who believe in debate, who believe in their next door neighbor. We've just gone through a storm here on the East Coast that was absolutely devastating. It's in the local news every night in this part of, this, of the country. And we're seeing who we are as Americans. And these people tonight are celebrating the, the conversation of debate and having issues and going back and forth. And I think that this win by Barack Obama is a real wake-up call to the Republican Party. Don't obstruct progress in this country for an ideological advantage. Don't do that. The American it is, it people is don't the want face it. Of by the way. I just you look at the picture of the Democratic Party. It actually looks face to face different than the Republican Party. It just does. It's a diverse crowd out there. Very young crowd, I must say, but a diverse crowd. And they it's they America, though. But, and, and I think that that is why you saw. How do you defeat big money? How do you defeat people changing the voting game in the middle of the game? Because people saw their interest in it. They were stand, everything that was gained from women's rights to civil rights to gay rights, everything that was gained in the last half century, the opponent to the president stood to eradicate that. People said that I've got to stand up for me. And as the president said, he became their prop. And people defeated the money, they defeated the changing of the rules, they, they took less days and made longer lines. This was a great statement for American democracy today. Melissa Harris Perry is on site uh, in Chicago uh, at, at Obama headquarters. I have to ask the control room actually, are we able to actually get to Melissa? All right, Melissa Harris Perry bringing her in now and from that scene uh, in Chicago. Melissa, uh, we can see some of what this is like, but what can you tell us about what it's like there? Well, I mean, obviously the crowd is incredibly enthusiastic and excited right now. They have been every time that 
a Democrat was called in a Senate race. Um, I think the calling of the whole election was a little bit of a surprise. People weren't quite ready for it. I, mean, I think the thing to remember is, you know, this is an amazing night, but it is quite different than it was four years ago. Four years ago, outside Grant Park, more than 150,000 people. This is a smaller event, so it's excited, but also a little more sober, I think. Um, you know, it, it's a bit like a first wedding versus a renewal of the vows, right? This is a recognition of how tough times are, how hard it is to govern, but the willingness to stay committed to this president. Melissa Harris Perry, that's a very, very good point. I mean, you think about the suspense heading into this race tonight. I mean, a lot of people only make create their expectations about what's going to happen in a race based on superstition and based on whether you're naturally optimistic or pessimistic. But the race was not this close heading in to beating John McCain. But the historic nature of the victory of the Democratic side with this particular president in 2008 was so overwhelming. Uh, we saw the streets fill up, uh, not just through Chicago's Grant Park fill up, but we saw the streets fill up with Americans celebrating what that was as achievement for the country. Tonight, it was much, le much less certain that it could happen. It was a, frankly, much harder race for Barack Obama to beat Mitt Romney than it was for him to beat John McCain, given what the country's been through for the past four years and now the past 10 years. This, however, I should mention, is on the street. This is outside the White House. People celebrating there now. Um, it is a different feeling. It is a different thing. But this is about, I'm telling you, it's about a consequential presidency, not just a consequential election.